Hi, I'm John Barnes, former state representative in House District 89 on the east side of Indianapolis. The Hoosier Environmental Council depends on your involvement in the legislative process. But we know it may have been a while since you had government class and you might need to spend a little bit of time brushing up with the government teacher. So we're going to give you a few uh, tips and uh, a little bit of advice about how to get involved in the process. Uh, first of all, if we look at Indiana state government, this is state government 101. Uh, when we talk about the legislative process and making bills, we've got two houses in Indiana, a bicameral legislature, 50 senators in the Indiana House, uh, I'm sorry, in the Indiana Senate, and 100 state representatives in the House chamber. The leader of the state Senate is the lieutenant governor or in the absence of the lieutenant governor the uh, pro tem of the senate and the leader of the indiana house is the speaker of the house in representative government it's always important to start at the very beginning and make sure that you're involved in campaigns and you find out candidate stands and you work to get the best people elected but bottom line once they're there uh, the senators in the Indiana State Senate serve for four-year terms, and the House members serve for two. Um, there is a lot of give and take and discussion in the legislative bodies, and it's important to understand that there are key times when you yourself can be involved in that discussion. Any legislator in either house of the state legislature can introduce a bill. If they introduce that bill, then they're going to be known as the author of the bill, and they can add co-authors as they go. Uh, when those bills uh, are introduced, they'll then be given a number. Uh, those numbers will sound something like this. If it's a bill in the Senate, it will be SB for Senate bill, and it will be followed by three numbers, like Senate Bill 121. In the House of Representatives, that bill will be referred to as HB for House Bill, and it will be followed by four numbers, like House Bill 1254. Once the, the number is assigned to the bill, the bill is assigned to committee, and hopefully the chair of that committee will decide to hear the bill. This is a key place where you can get involved, because if you look on the legislative website, you'll find when the committees are having their hearings, and those committees are all open to the public, and any member of the public can go to that hearing and sign up to testify. So if you see a bill that concerns you, and certainly there's an awful lot of environmental legislation we're talking about these days, uh, you could actually come uh, by yourself or with others and make a stand and make sure that your voice is heard as the deliberations are being made over that bill. Once the committee finishes its deliberations on the bill, uh, they may suggest that that bill then be advanced to the full chamber. So a Senate bill then would be heard in the Senate chamber, or a House bill would be heard in the House chamber and submitted for a full vote of that body. Uh, this becomes even more important because at that time then you can start notifying people who you know are going to be voting on that bill and voicing your opinion there. Uh, in other words, if you didn't get enough input in the committee session, you can certainly make the argument that here's the bill that's going to hit the floor and here's why I support it or here's what I'm against or here's how I think it probably should be changed. There are an awful lot of different ways that bills can be amended in the process. But the key thing is contact and making sure that you communicate with your legislators. And we'll talk about the best way to do that in a minute. Over here. About halfway through the legislative session, the bills cross over. What we mean by that is in late February or early March, the Senate bills that pass the Senate chamber will go over to the House for consideration there. And the House bills that passed in the first part of the session will go over to the Senate. Uh, at that point, the process begins all over again, and the committee process begins all over again. So that gives you another opportunity to have a voice. If you were concerned about that issue before, you can go to committee meetings in the other chamber, from here to here or here to here, and speak about it again. 
ultimately it will be voted on again and you'll end up with most likely two different versions of the same bill, a House version and a Senate version that they'll come together at the end of session and compromise on. The most important thing to remember about the lawmaking process in the state of Indiana is that we have a citizen legislature. What that means is they're part-timers. They're supposed to be, and I stress supposed to be, average citizens just like you uh, who get elected and then spend three or four months as members of that body while the, the uh, legislative session is going on. That means they are folks just like you. Uh, they're supposed to be able to relate to you, and most importantly, they're supposed to expect that the public, people in the state of Indiana, voters here in this state, would want to have input and would want to get a chance to talk to them. There are lots and lots of different ways that you can contact your state representative, your state senator, as well as other members of the chamber. And if you go to the Indiana General Assembly website, it's very simple to do that. Most every member has a legislative assistant, and even if you can't get through specifically to the senator or the House member, you'll be able to talk to them. Uh, emails are always good, phone calls are always good, uh, but the most important thing, as I said before, is personal contact. If you yourself can go down there, uh, either during a committee meeting or at a time when there's going to be a floor vote, uh, that's the best impression you can make because that personal contact reinforces that you care about the issues and this issue is important to you. Uh, we'll talk in other videos about how you can continue to make an impact, but hopefully this starts to make the process a little bit more friendly and helps you understand that it's not a big mystery or a secret what goes on at the state legislature. It's just a matter of getting involved, getting down there and seeing that you yourself can make an impact. Uh, even as a single citizen, a single voter, you can have a big voice.